Hi, Gary Chillingworth here for Egg Gunner Magazine, Shooting Country TV. Welcome to Life at the Range. Today we have got one of the most requested videos that I've had via email, comments and Facebook, range finding. Now, we're going to go over the few basics. Uh, we're going to go through blur, we're going to go through bracketing, uh, we're going to go through the head bob. There's lots of different things you can do, so hopefully you'll be able to take something away uh, from what we go over today. Um, if it's your first time here, if you could do us a big favour and if you enjoy the video, click the little bell notification to like the video um, or the like thumbs up button. Um, subscribe to Shooting in Country TV. We're trying to promote a really positive uh, buzz around shooting on YouTube. Um, and if you could share the video with anyone you think that might it might be useful to or that just might enjoy it, um, that would be a great help. So enough waffle. Let's go on with some range finding and welcome to Life at the Range. Okay, first thing we need to talk about is blur. Now, when you look through a telescopic sight, and you've set your parallax at 25 to 30 yards, you will notice that your targets close up will be blurry within your scope, and sometimes your targets further down range will as well. So learn your blur. When I'm looking through my rifle, and I'm looking at my target eight yards away, I can't make out the kill zone because it's blurry. But if I draw my head back along the cheek piece, it then comes into more focus so I can actually make out the kill zone. At 10 yards I can make out the kill zone without drawing my head back. So if I have to move my head I know it's 8 or 9 yards. If I look at it and it's very blurry but I can make it out it's 10 or 11. If it's a 15 mil kill zone that's incredibly blurry but I can still measure it I know it's 13. And then when it goes out to 17 yards it's crystal clear. So by setting out targets, you can actually tell how far it is away by using the blur. Now, the thing to remember is on a bright sunny day, that can actually affect it. If it's really bright and sunny, you won't get as much blur in your scope. However, if it's dark and overcast, you'll get more. And at the other end of the spectrum, my scope is clear at 40 yards and I can make out the sharp edges of a pellet strike on the plate. But at 45, I can see the target fine. But when I'm looking at the edges of the pellet marks, they're slightly blurry. So again, use your blur, look at the pellet marks, just not at the kill zone, and that will help you. Blur is your friend. Okay, so bracketing. That is a word that you will hear a lot. And to be honest with you, it's not used as much as it used to be. Now, what bracketing is, is people will build up a chart. And what they will do is they will look usually at a kill zone. Now, this is a half track from flop over with a 30 mil kill zone. And what they'll do is they'll have a chart that says if they put their crosshair here and they measure it across for their multi game point reticule at 40 yards, that will be 0.9 of a mil dot. So they know that if they're looking at a 30 mil kill and it's 0.9 of a mil dot, it's 40 yards away. If they know it's 1.2 mil dots, it's 35 yards away. But this requires you to know the size of your kill zone. So bracketing kills can really work on 15 and 20 mil kill zones because people don't really mess around with those. But places like flop over, they produce these in 30, 32, 35, 37. They do bespoke stuff. So it can mess with you a bit. The other thing people bracket is the hinge. They put their crosshairs here. They measure across to the hinge. But again, a lot of call setters now put something in front of that to stop you doing it. One trick that I really like doing is if you've got a target like this, and it's got two or three uniform size pellet strikes, I know at 40 yards, if I put my crosshair on top of this pellet mark, I can't see it. However, if it's at 35 yards, it just bleeds out on the edge. But that obviously only works if you've got two or three uniform size 
kills. Now, another thing people do is they like to measure the faceplate. They go across the kill or they might measure the head because there are a lot of these sort of squirrel targets, rabbit targets, rat targets. There are a lot of targets that you'll see that pop up over and over and over again. And years ago, that was absolutely brilliant because all these faceplates were the same size. But then you've got people again like Richard Woods at Flopover, who is one of the cleverest people I know. And what he does is he produces these plates, but in different sizes that correspond to the kill zone. So someone will look at this, they'll put their crosshair in the middle, they'll measure out to the side, they'll check their chart, and it will tell them it's 30 yards. But because the faceplate is smaller, that will really mess with them because it will give them an incorrect image. So bracketing does work to a fashion, but try not to do it on anything more than a 15 or 20 mil kill zone because there aren't many 16, 17 mil kills out there. So give bracketing a try, but there are other ways of checking your ranges. Okay, the most popular way of range finding is the good old fashioned Mark 1 eyeball. Now, the Mark 1 eyeball is your most important weapon in HFT. Now, strangely enough, you are already very, very good at range finding. I'll guarantee that. Whenever you've gone out with the kids or with the parents or whatever, and you've picked up a ball and you've thrown it to someone, your brain has said, that's 10 yards away and I need to have 10 yards worth of momentum in my hand to, to get the ball to get to that person. So you can range find. But that sort of works out to 10, 15 yards. So here's a good little trick. Walk up to your peg and look at your target. Then pick the halfway point between you and that target and range find to there. It's much easier to range find to 20 yards and double it than it is to 40. Other tips and tricks is learn how long your legs are. Now I know for 25 yards, I need to take 27 steps because my legs are just under a yard long or my gait is just under a yard long. So when I'm in Tesco's and I've picked up the, the uh, vegetarian hummus, yeah, and I look down there and think, ah, there's the steak. Hummus is for the wife, the steak's for me. And I think, that's 20 yards. And then I'll step it out and I'll see how close I get. I do that when I'm out with the dogs. I do it when I'm out with the wife. I'm permanently looking at things and then measuring how far away it is. Train your Mark 1 eyeball. Now, there is one other problem. The Mark 1 eyeball can lie to you. Rangefinders have known for years that if they put a target in a tunnel, so wide out here and narrow at the bottom, it makes the brain think it's further away. So if you're looking at the tunnel effect, just be aware that that's drawing your eye in. The other really important thing is never ever try and range find laying on the ground. Your brain has spent however many years you've been on the earth looking at things from whatever height you are. But basically the brain works knowing that you look from here to there. So I'm six foot and I know that it's that angle and I can work out that range. If I lay down on the ground, I get completely false readings. So only ever range when you're standing up. So practice your range finding, look at your target, reduce it by half, range to there, Use the Mark 1 eyeball, it really does help. Okay, so the head bob. If you walk onto any HFT course, you will see people doing that as they're looking through their scope. And that is because they're watching the crosshairs move within the kill zone. Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pass you over to the fat man in the conservatory and he will explain it a little bit better than I can. Ah, hello. Um, did he just say fat man in the conservatory again? Yeah, we're going to have to have words. So we're here to talk about the head bob. 
Now, the head bob is all to do with parallax error. Now, do you remember in the past, in one of our previous uh, scope videos, we said parallax error essentially is if you pick a point in the distance, put your thumb in front of you, close one eye, and then you move your head, your thumb goes to the right, move your head to the right, your thumb goes to the left. That's parallax error. Well, telescopic sites have got a way of negating this, but it only works at one particular distance. On the side of your scope, you will have a thing called a parallax adjuster. And most HFT shooters set it somewhere between 25 and 30 yards. So what that means is that if you have a target like this with a 40 mil kill zone, you put your reticule in the middle of it. And if you bob your head up and down, right and left, if this target is at 30 yards and you have a 30 yard parallax, your crosshairs won't move. If, however, you have a 30-yard parallax and you're looking at 40 yards, the crosshairs will move up and down. If it's at 45 yards, it will move even more. If it's at 8 yards, it will move even more. So what you can do is you walk up to a target, you go, I don't know how far that is. Put your crosshairs in the middle, bob your head. If it doesn't move, then you know it's 30 yards. If it moves just a little bit, you know it's 34, 35 yards. If it moves pretty much all within the kill zone, but not outside of it, you know it's 40 yards. If it goes crazy, then you know it's 45. And the same with 8, 9, 10, 15. And it's purely as a case of getting out there, putting out targets at 10, 15, 20, all the way out to 45 yards. Set your parallax at 30 or 25 or whatever you want to do it, whatever works best for you. And start bobbing your head up and down, left and right. Now, I can't take any credit for this. It was Charles Peel and Graham Cargan um, who told me all about this. In fact, Graham, I say, Graham told me all about this whilst he was refilling his ISP with air, but that's a different story. Go out and practice. Learn the head bob. I've only just started doing it myself, but those are the fundamentals. I know with my 30-yard parallax, if I put my crosshairs at the bottom of a kill zone, I know that it will move approximately that much with the head bob for my eyes with my scope. Hope that helps. Go and give it a try. You know it makes sense. I now need to go and have a word with Gary, the fat man out on the range. Okay, just a couple of little extra tips and tricks um, that sometimes help and sometimes don't. String oh. carriers. Now, somebody will put out a target and they'll come all the way back and their string carrier will have 45 yards of string in it. Now, some might have more, some might have less, but chances are you're not going to have a club that will actually make a 40-yard string carrier because then they can't use it on a 45-yard target. So if you've got a target that's all the way out there and you pull the string all the way tight and there's just enough string in there to get to your peg, there's a good chance it's 45 yards. You know, if it's um, your home club and there's like a big tree out there and you know that your firing line is here, it's worth learning how far that tree is because there's a good chance that there's going to be a target in or around that. So local knowledge certainly does help. So look at the string carrier. Local Norwich, look at the, you know, look at the leaves and things like that. You know, is, is it a case that a branch, you know, a very thin branch, you can see crisp in your scope, but you know that if it's a brown branch and it's blurry, you know it's over 40 yards, that's worth doing. Um, I know on my scope, if I can see the back of a leaf, if I can make out the veins, I know it's under 30 yards. If I can't make out the veins, and it's a little bit more whatever. I know it's over 30. So a few little extra tips and tricks. Well, thank you so much for joining here at the range. Um, 
I really hope today's uh, information has helped you, uh, you know, to get your range finding a bit better. It's something we all need to do. Um, we've got another video coming out in a couple of weeks, which will be the HW98 video. Um, I have actually made that video, but I've sent it off to be checked because uh, I just want to make sure that I've got everything correct. Um, in the next couple of days, I'm going to be re-bluing my TX. So there's probably going to be a blog post from the hospital when I've done something seriously wrong. Um, please like, share and subscribe uh, to, you know, to Shooting and Country TV. It really does help. We'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Stay safe. Look after each other. Shoot straight. Ta-da.